Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Chad Donahue. Dr. Barbara Dixon, interim president of Lock Haven University, is our guest. Well, we've been talking about the challenges uh, for higher education and things, but let's focus on Lock Haven a little bit here in our final segment. Uh, I understand there's a building boom. You've got a lot of construction <laughs> going on your watch. Whether you're interim or not, uh, right. there's a lot of stuff going on that's kind of exciting over it there. Is. Uh, we have started the process of designing a new residence hall, which will be moving from, you know, the kind of traditional dorm rooms to um, two-person suites, semi-private suites and private, private rooms for mm -hmm. students. That's scheduled to open in 2012. Uh, that's on a fast track. Then we also are uh, almost ready to let the bids for the new science uh, building. That's not a brand new building. It's uh, taking a part of an old school and renovating part of it, and there'll be, a, you know, some of it will be brand new, but it's uh, an addition. And then we're doing some renovation. We were really fortunate. One of our alums um, left us some money, and we're going to renovate a particular part of the library to develop a learning commons, which will have a tut tutorial center, the writing center, and small group study rooms and places for kids to study. So we think that that will be a really wonderful addition to the library. Yeah, it, it is kind of an exciting time, I think, to be in college as a student with all these new technologies, mm -hmm. the internet and all of that sort of thing. That uh, seemed like space shuttle stuff to us when we were in college, but <laughs> you have to stay with the times. So yeah, okay. we really do. Yeah, and we have all of our students bring a laptop with them. That's one of the things that Lock Haven has done. And um, we, we're still kind of learning how to make the very, very best use of that in terms of faculty-student interaction, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. I see here 49 majors and certifications, uh, certifications, excuse me, with 41 minors. So a very diverse, eclectic type of thing to choose from we academically. Do. Mm -hmm. We have. Um, we have the, you know, the, the liberal arts um, majors that students can choose. Those that are going into secondary education take a major in the liberal arts. And students who find that they might want to go on to graduate school right away are usually there. But, uh, and then we have about 75% of our students graduate with um, a major in what we call the professional programs. That's the education, um, sports administration, health and physical education. Um, we have a physician's assistant master's program, which is extremely um, competitive, about 900 applications for s about 78 or 79 slots. Um, so we have we have a lot of students who head toward that, but they all get a very firm grounding in in general education and the liberal studies yeah. before they head toward the professional world. And I uh, you know athletic trainers. I got about five Absolutely. friends of mine, one yes. of the best in the I'm country. So, yes, and they're all y proud yes. to be from Lock Haven. I know it's, that. It, thank you. You're I, right there. I would be in trouble if I hadn't mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew I had your back yeah, on that one because <laughs> so, uh, it's it is yeah. absolutely top notch. One right. of the and you know there are people NFL and things like that. It's uh, it's as good as it gets. One of the things too in your mission statement. You really are a proponent. Smaller classes, more intimate relationships with professors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I know that's a fine balance to try and do. You it know. is. When you're making budget cuts, one of the things you start to do is make bigger classes. And that was, that was a real stress. The best thing to talk, tell you about that is whenever I ask a student who I've met for the first time, um, particularly a recent alum or juniors or seniors, I ask them to tell me what they like best about Lock Haven. Almost to a person, they say, they love the fact that the fa they're not a number with the faculty. The faculty know them by name. They have a chance to get to know the kids in their class. The small, it, it really is um, a haven. And we do use that as a tagline. But they, they, they tell me they feel challenged, and yet they don't feel um, that there's so much competitiveness that they don't know, uh, that they can't get help. So no. that, that's a real, uh, I think, a real plus for students to have small classes, contact with faculty. We have no graduate assistants teaching our classes. Yeah, and you know, I think you're talking about a sense of community. Yes, because, uh, absolutely. How many do you have, 5,900 students? Or no, we're, uh, we're about at 5,000, just a little. About 5,000. Yeah, 5, okay. undergraduates. It's on page yes. two in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but about, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's pretty small. It is, and if you're comparing you a chance, it right. to, to the big the yeah, Big the, Ten. Yeah, yeah. Or that's where well, you yeah. you went to Michigan State. I did. Well, that's thirty eight thousand yeah. or forty or something. But a lot of a lot of students would be overwhelmed by those numbers, yes. and they yes. just wouldn't fit. 
Correct. Is that the big that, thing I that I think you it could... is. And and there's no right or wrong to that. If a student really wants to be in the big place and can survive and do more than survive, I think we should say can thrive there. There's no reason that, but there are a lot of students that um, I think thrive in this smaller environment. Um, so it's it's a real choice and it's hard. We wish it were science and we could categorize it, but it, right. it, students have to find their the right place for them. Yeah, and that's in that, you know, we talked yeah. about that already yes. as far as what, you know, what choice do I make and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, fundraising, and I know you were very actively involved with this in your previous stop at Truman where you raised $30 million, but, um, and, and we've got about a minute and 20 left here, but how big of a challenge is it fundraising and because you got to energize your alumni base you and do. do all of that. I mean, you, it's a very interesting thing there, too. Right. Well, the $30 million campaign at Edgerman has not come to an end yet. It's supposed to finish this June. But before that, we had to get the pieces in place for an advancement office, the correct, you know, the appropriate fundraisers. You have to develop your base and visit your alums. You have to be, you know, there's a whole role in all of that for alumni. And it begins to involve everybody on the campus, but in a much, much different degree. It involves the deans to a lesser degree, faculty to some degree, keeping in touch with the alumni. And um, most alumni do start giving back at some point in time, and it's more important all the time now. Uh, and it's important for you to keep in, in touch with the alums who have been gone 30 to 40 years. Uh, so all of that is a part of it. Yeah, and 20 seconds or less, I guess, in fundraising, um, and let's just take it from a collegiate standpoint, you want them to kind of take ownership into what you're doing. Into your Absolutely, mission. and one of the reasons we want students to have such a good experience at our college is so they will not just leave and go away, that they'll keep coming back for a lot of reasons, to interact with our students, to mm -hmm. show our students what they've done with their Lock right. Haven education. Well, thank you. Dr. Barbara Dixon has been our guest, uh, the interim president of Lock Haven University. I'm Judd Donahue. We thank you for watching For the Record.